Okay, here you can see my horizontal plate tacked up. I've got some stamps on it. Zero would be representing the welder. Two is for the position. In this case here, it's horizontal. And then I've got coupons one, two, and three. One and three being root bends, two being a face bend. I'm gonna start my weld on my runoff tab and I'm gonna run right through on my square side. My second weld is gonna have a stop about four and a half inches from that end. This is where I'll stop and show the inspector. Once again, let's have a look at some of the hand tools we're going to need for this test. I would say the two most important being your wire brush and your chipping hammer. This is SMAW, produces a slag, we need to chip that off. I've got my hammer and I've got my chisel and this is solely for removing spatter or any sort of material. We're not allowed any sort of metal removing tools such as a file or any sort of abrasive discs. However, we are allowed an angle grinder with a wire wheel. Another important tool you want to have is a sharp pick and if there's any undercut or any slag that's trapped and you want to remove it, I would suggest you get something sharp so that you can dig that out. Okay, I'm using a 7018 low hydrogen straight out of the oven. This is a 1 8 electrode. The requirements are that the electrode be at least an eighth of an inch or greater in diameter. As mentioned earlier, we're using those runoff tabs to light up. Get comfortable here. This is the long weld. We're going straight through on this square side. We're not stopping or anything like that. I'm uh, making sure I'm holding that 5 16 weld. I got a nice tight arc length. Puddle recognition. I've got a nice shiny puddle that's sort of glowing back. I don't see any undercut forming, any sort of cold lap or anything like that. I'm staying at the leading edge of my puddle the whole time. I've got about a 45 degree angle, give or take five degrees up or down. And that's pointing right into that square edge and making sure that I'm penetrating. This is the root. So it's, it's very important that we have enough heat and we get good penetration on this. Okay, here's where people seem to struggle on this pass. Use your runoff tab. Make sure that that puddle is established. Make sure that you've got the right arc length, the right angle, and use that all on the runoff tab so that whenever you run into this, you don't have a muffled weld with too much slag sort of falling down and you can't identify your puddle. That's sort of the problem on this one here. But we're doing the same thing. We're keeping a nice tight arc length. I've got about um, five degrees off of 90 dragging. That's my inclination. And I'm pointing straight up, right into that groove, making sure that I'm marrying the bottom pass, the backing bar, and that top bevel. Once I approach the end, Again, like always, I'm gonna break the arc quickly so that I can tie into this nicely. Okay, now it's time to tie into that stop. The technique I like to use is the same for any position for stick welding or SMAW. I'll strike the arc within the weld zone. I'll kind of come back or long arc a little bit, and then I'll return to that crater. And when I'm returning, I'll dive in, I'll trace the crater move out and then once I get to the end of the crater I return to my regular travel speed. That allows me to have a nice hot start. The last thing I want is a cold start that's not going to fuse properly. Okay here you can see me tying in. I'm striking ahead and then moving back once that rod's nice and warm. I'm tracing that crater and moving out. Once I get to the end of it I'm going back to my regular travel speed and then I'm pointing up. I'm making sure that I got that tight arc length and my puddle is nice and clear. And then once I approach the end, if you don't have runoff tabs, you can sort of kind of hang off the edge a little bit, come back maybe a quarter of an inch and hang out and just let it fill and then cut the arc. All right, as always, now that I've got my tie in, I'm gonna start filling this. I'm gonna do it in two layers and then I'll be able to cap. Keep in mind the horizontal, we always work from the bottom up. With my tie-in done now, I'm gonna start filling this. I'm gonna start on that bottom. I'm gonna put a heavier weld in at the bottom and probably leave about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the plate. And then I'm gonna put my second pass right on top of that. Again, I'm pointing down. This is really the only pass that you're gonna point down. The rest of them you're either pointing into the plate or up a little bit. That's the first pass of my fill on the bottom side. Now you can see that I brought it out almost to that edge. I've got about a little more than a 16th left. Your second fill pass is a lot like the root. 
you're kind of pointing up a little bit and making sure that that puddle is washing and it's ramping up onto the side wall and filling that up and making sure that it's nice and even. We want to bring out this fill pass almost flush with the plate, you know, maybe under a 16 so that you've got enough room here to cap and you don't go over whenever you go to do your reinforcement cap. Okay, so here I'm in good shape to start capping. One small concern is that I'm a little bit lower on this side than I am over here. So I'm gonna try my best when I'm capping this to keep it slower in the beginning and then speed it up towards the end. But it's, it's really important that we bring this fill to be you know just under flush of this plate and then we have a nice quick cap in four passes and we'll make this thing look pretty all right i stuck a little bit it's a good thing i've got those run on and brought on tabs as you witness because i ended up sticking on the tab and not halfway or in to the beginning of my well so this first pass here as mentioned is going to be going a little bit slower and it's going to serve as part of a shelf for the rest of the pass to stack up. Okay, so I'm on my last pass right now. Sometimes we want to let this cool down a little bit because it, it is prone to undercutting on the top. Um, another thing we can do is we can actually adjust our amperage a little bit if we're close to our machine. For me, I'm going to just hold off a little bit and, uh, you know, sometimes we'll just grab a drink, come back, and then we can, we can finish that last pass to avoid any undercut. Here is our finished product. Here you can see me measuring with that gauge to make sure that I'm within criteria. Flush to the plate or no higher than an eighth of an inch. Here you can see on the one side of my cap that I'm not quite blended in to that plate. So there's kind of a little bit of overlap right now. Now that ends up being a face bend as well, but we're gonna cut and bend this and see what this thing can do. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about this. Be sure to subscribe, like, and we'll catch you on the next one.